I'm gonna be honest with you, I think this is the best Desmos guide on YouTube. No fluff, no TED talk, we're just gonna be going over the exact Desmos moves that print points on the SAT. Now here's the deal, Desmos is the SAT math cheat code. I've combed the internet, stolen all the good ideas, and deleted all the cringe. And today, I'm gonna to be putting it all here for you guys to see. And there'll be Minecraft. There was literally a time where one of my students watched one Desmos video before taking the SAT and immediately jumped 50 points on the math section with no other studying being done. And that can be you too if you actually watch this video and lock in. But first, let's cover the basics. Desmos is a calculator, so it can do calculations. But it can also do a bunch of other stuff. For example, you can write the word table to create a table that you can actually fill in with points. You can use sliders to create constants like A, B, and C, which you can then adjust the values of. But you can also use X and Y to be variables that can account for literally any number. There are other functions you can use too, like mean, median, standard deviation, distance, and midpoint. You can also use stuff to find the square root, the cube root, or even the percentage of different numbers. But now that we got the basics out of the way, let's talk about how to actually use Desmos. Single variable equations. If an equation just has one variable put into Desmos, the vertical line will just show the answer. Now, if it doesn't show the answer, that means you're screwed. Bruh. Just kidding, you actually have to just split up the equation and type it into both sides, y equals the first side and y equals the second side. And then you should actually be able to see lines, and usually at this point, they'll be either not intersecting at all or literally be the exact same line. We'll get to what that means in a second. But first, try to solve this equation. So I can type 5x minus four over x plus three is equal to two. And so I can see here, it intersects basically right above 3.3. All right, but what if you have a system of equations with two equations and two variables? What you want to do is graph both equations and look at the intersection. That's the solution. If there's no intersection, there's no solution. If there's one intersection, there's one solution. If they're the exact same line, there are infinite solutions. And so you can probably pretty much just reason at this point, the amount of times that the lines right. touch are the amount of solutions that they have. So if I'm given this equation, 2x plus 3y is equal to 10, and I'm also given another equation saying x plus 4y is equal to 12, I can see here that essentially it intersects at 0.8 and 2.8. That's the only place of intersection, and so that would be the correct answer for this one. Inequalities. You can type y is less than or y is greater than to create an inequality. So keep in mind, it's not just the line that's the solution, it's everything in the shaded region above or below the line. And the line itself may not even be part of the solution itself. It only is if it's a solid line. If it's a broken line, that means it's not part of the solution. If you have two different inequalities, the place where they're double shaded is the answer set. This again, kind of makes sense if you consider the fact that before you had the intersection being the answer set. Now we're also just looking at the intersection, except this time it's a lot bigger. So if I got two equations here, like two X plus uh, three, is greater than y. And then I have another one here saying 3x plus four is less than y. So I can see there are two shaded regions here and every place in the overlap where they're both shaded is where the solutions are. Intercepts and vertices. This stuff is pretty simple. If a line hits through the x-axis, meaning the horizontal axis, that's where it has an x-intercept. If the line goes through the y-axis, the vertical axis, that's where it has a y-intercept. If you have a quadratic function like one of these, the bottom point or the maximum point is the vertex of it. Now let's go on to statistics. If you're trying to find the mean or the median or the standard deviation, you can just use the function to find that. There's really nothing else. Just make sure you type in the numbers correctly because a lot of people accidentally don't do that Bruh. and then they get these problems wrong. Circles. The equation for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. hk is the center of the circle and the radius is equal to r. There's a bunch of things you can do with this. If you take the farthest away points on the circle and use the distance function, you can find the full diameter of the circle, meaning how far the circle is from each side to each side. If you use the midpoint formula on the exact same points, you can find the center of the circle. Now onto regression. Everybody thinks regression is the most difficult part of using Desmos and they think it's the worst thing in the entire world. And it is pretty bad, but it's actually not as bad as it may seem. So say I gave you this table and I should find what A would be in this equation based on it. Your first thought may be to cry, but your second thought should be to use Desmos regression. Just type in the table exactly like you see it, and then write the equation exactly as you see it as well. Except you have to make a couple of changes. Instead of just the x and y variables, you have to put x1 and y1. Instead of the equal sign, you have to put the tilde. 
If you do not do this, it's not going to look at the table for the information, and it's just literally not going to work. But if you do this correctly, you will see basically all the different constants you need from that equation. So I can pretty easily see that A in this case would be negative five. Now, let me be clear for a second. Desmos regression is all over the SAT. And there's basically an infinite supply of equations that you could theoretically use with it. The goal should just be to understand Desmos regression as well as you possibly can. So that way, whenever you do see a problem like this, you'll be able to figure it out without too much stress. Onto your functions. This is pretty obvious if you've been following along up to this point, but functions are essentially the exact same thing as the y variable, except you can also plug in whatever x you want into them. You define a function by putting f of x is equal to something. And then if you want to find what the function would be equal to, just type f of whatever thing you're trying to find. You can also use this to transform the graph, like if you write f of x minus 4 or something like that. Finally, trigonometry. Not really too much you have to say for this one. Just go here and here to find the trigonometric functions. You can put them in and do whatever you want from there. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sounds cool, Magic Man, but I can't use Desmos for everything, right? No, you cannot. But you can use it for honestly almost anything. Anything involving line graphing, calculations, or basic equations can definitely be done using Desmos all the time. Basically, the only time you don't want to be using Desmos at all is if you literally cannot. For example, if you need to do some simple algebraic maneuvers like putting numbers on the other side of the equation, you can't do that with Desmos. Or if you need to make some kind of inference about what to do when you see a triangle, you can't make that inference itself using Desmos since there's no way to really put shapes into that. But you can do the later calculations using Desmos, of course. But just remember, if you choose not to use Desmos when you could use it, you're literally causing yourself to waste more time and increase the chances you get more questions wrong. There's nothing noble about not using Desmos that much. You're literally just making it harder for yourself. Now here's the deal, this was pretty cool, but none of this matters if you don't actually practice and improve on it. And the problem is most students, they just do infinite practice problems without ever actually learning anything from them or trying to improve in any way. So I made a free training video that shows my system for turning wrong answers into permanent upgrades. This video will essentially show how to make it so that whenever you get a question incorrect, you can make it so you never get that same question type incorrect ever again. It's completely free and you can access it with the link in the description. I'll see you guys there. Let's lock in for this SAT.